All right, so for this video, we're looking at the uh, Intech, uh, Intech Studio modular controllers, the MIDI module controllers that can be reconfigured in different ways. Uh, and we're going to look at the software. So with just a couple of controllers, we can use conditional statements to add more functionality to buttons and faders, etc. So for this, I'm going to use the uh, fader module, and I'm going to use the uh, continuous encoder with push function module. So I'll connect those up to the grid software now. Right, so looking at the software, I'll plug in the first one, you see it comes up straight away, and then this is the encoder module. Snap it in and it'll show up straight away as well. And all the functionality shows up on the screen, so you can see which parameters you're grabbing, so you don't have to click a few through menus. All right, so first of all, we're gonna look at the continuous encoder and push functionality. So if I open up the MIDI window here, you can see these MIDI messages coming through. So right now I've got an encoder and a push function just on and off. So you'll see there's no push and turn functionality. So pushing and turning is still just the encoder. Uh, what we can do is use conditionals to check the status of the, uh, the push function and change the MIDI signal of the encoder function based on that. First of all, I'll check my, my push is zero to one, two, seven. So off is zero, on is one, two, seven. And I'll switch over to the debug mode. So on the encoder, um, twist to make sure we're on the encoder setting because that's what we want to change. And I'm going to add a couple of action blocks. So first of all, I'm going to add an if statement. So add action. And with an if, it's if or something else. So if it's not this, it's going to do something else. I'll add an else statement in there as well. And what I want to happen, the else will be the normal state. So I'll add a couple of code blocks in here. I'll show you why in a second a code block uh, and these are going to print a value into our debug editor here. So else is going to be my normal state. So I'll just say normal and make sure I commit that so it stays in there. The conditional will be when the button is pressed, push, commit that. So you can see there's a few other actions already included in the encoder. So this is the normal MIDI and it's pulling the values from uh, its build state. This is what I want to keep normal. So that'll be in the normal state. So I'll just drag this down into that else section. So this is what will happen when everything is kind of normal when the button's not pressed. But now I want it to do something when it is pressed. And because the button is part of it, I can reference itself. I want the button state. So I actually search for that button. It'll show me right here, self button state. So it's like, what is my button state? And if it is one, two, seven, then do this. If it's not, do what you normally do. And so we can check those now. So now if I rotate it, you can see it's printing normal in the side here. If I press it and turn, you can see it's telling me I've pushed it. Now, so on that encoder, self button state, if it is one, two, seven, run the first command. If it's not, run the second. So we need to add a MIDI signal into this one as well. At the moment, it's not sending anything on the first option. I can copy the original one. So I'll copy that, paste it, and I'll just drag it into that first the if statement, and what I want it to do is I need to set it a different MIDI value. And just to keep things easy, I'm just going to change the whole channel because I know that's going to be a safe option in terms of not colliding with other MIDI values at the moment. What I'll actually do is I'll make sure it takes this initial channel and then adds one to it. So whatever the initial channel is, it's going to add one to that. And we can see that in the MIDI window. So I open up back the MIDI view here, rotating as normal. So channel zero. There's my values on the side there. Press, I can see my press trigger, but now if I turn, because it's changed to channel one, it's giving me the values right there. All right, so now we've got two functions of that single MIDI control. All right, so jumping into Resolume, I've got this line clip here set up, and on the dashboard, I've got a couple of controls. I've got a rotation control and the amount of lines. So I want to control these two on this encoder, MIDI control mode, and keeping in mind that Pressing is also a MIDI signal. So I need to make sure I'm not recording the press, but the actual signal after it. So first of all, I want the amount to actually be my press and turn. So if I press and turn, that's recorded in there. And now just my normal turn can be the rotation. If I exit out of MIDI mode, there's my rotation on the normal turn. If I press and turn, I'm increasing the number of lines on that one single encoder. So back in grid, I can do that for all of my encoders as much as I want. I have multiple conditionals between them. Uh, so I want to do a similar thing on my faders here. I want the fader to be kind of a normal fader, but then when I press and hold the button below it, 
I want the fader to do something else. Now on the encoder, see it's referencing itself, self button state. So what is my button state? And because the button and the encoder are on the same thing, you can see it. But on the, uh, on the fader, it doesn't have a button attached. The button's actually a separate element. So right here, the elements are referenced. On this fader now, I want to do a similar thing. So I'm going to build out my conditionals. So an if statement and an else statement. And I'll add in my normal print code so I know what I'm talking about. So else, I want this to be the normal state. Commit to save. If, if the button is pressed, so pushed state. Move my MIDI down into my normal section here. So again, program this on the uh, fader here. Switch over to my debug window and I'll start my statement here. So if I check the element, so press the button. This is actually element eight. So these buttons are all different numbers. So this one up here is called element eight. So I need to reference element eight when I'm changing the fader here. So normally we'd go self button state is pushed. What we want to do is we go, instead of self, we want to look for that element. So very simple element, square brackets, number eight. Now, for some reason, it thinks it's backwards, which is fine. So we're just going to change this. So state zero. So now, the fader is normal if you look over at the window here. When I'm pressing and holding and sliding up, we can see it's in the pushed mode. So similar to before, I want to keep this MIDI normal. I can copy that, paste it, and simply move it up into that first block. And I want to change the channel again, so let's go to plus one so I know it's clear. So I want this to be the same for all of my sliders. So rather than writing it again, I can actually copy it across. So on this one, I just go this, copy, first slider, next one over, I'll paste it straight in. Uh, but this time I'll change it to element nine, which is the button below it. Next one, paste, this one will be element 10. Next one, we'll paste that in, this can be element 11. Now we'll see because this is actually referencing the MIDI is using its internal controls. Uh, I don't need to change anything else. It's doing all the same stuff as it needs to. What I do need to do is I need to remove the default MIDI from these. So just remove all those. And now these should all function the same with the buttons below. So if I switch back over to Resolume, and I'll record some MIDI in. So, edit MIDI mode. I'll quickly record in my buttons there. Uh, I want the fader for each one just to be the normal fader. And now, what I actually want is on these layers, you can see we can switch the layers now with the buttons, the faders work as they should, uh, but I wanna add an effect onto those layers. I wanna record that. Again, I'm recording the not the press, but the actual slide afterwards. Make sure I actually got that encoder recorded in there. All right, I've got a fade on there, but if I press and hold, I'll be able to fade in my strobe as well. If I look at the layer clip here, you can see that strobe fading in. And that should be the same for all my layers. So layer two, press and hold, fade in the strobe. I can leave it faded in. So that strobe's still in there. I can bring up my intensity and then fade the strobe out. We actually add even more steps to this. So Add another if statement. So maybe if I'm pressing another button as well. So maybe if I'm pressing button two instead, this will change something else. So I'll add another statement in here. Else if, so this is another step. Uh, add another code block. Button two. I'll copy this down. And I want to check the next button. So now I want to find out if I'm pressing button nine. So fader one, debug mode, pushed, or button two. And so I'll give this another 
MIDI value. I'll copy and paste. And this can be plus two now. We want MIDI trees again. Beta one, pressed, goes to channel two, pressed again. All right, so now I've got two functions, or three functions actually on this one slider. So first function is just the uh, opacity. Second function is that strobe. And now I can add another function. So I'm gonna use this second one to actually control my transition here. So if I go back into edit MIDI, and I wanna capture that, so I'm holding second button, I'm going to recording that in there now as well. Now I've got a lot more functionality just on this one slider and these buttons here. So kind of like a video game controller, I can have a whole lot of happening with this little tiny controller. So first one is just my fade there. I'll have a second clip. Hold the bottom. First one to bring in the strobe. And then second one, I can change my transition time. So you have a lot more functionality of sliders with a very small setup just by using a few conditional statements. All right. Hope that helped. Get any ideas or suggestions, let me know in the comments. Thanks.